In this video we're going to go through the accounting setup. The first thing that we're going to do is go and amend our financial year. So if I go into the setup option in the accounting module and double click on accounting periods it will show me my financial year with the current period of I mean, etc as we set it up originally. Now what I can do down here if I right click on the last period in the year I have the option to add or delete periods. So what I'm just going to do is add a period, it asks me if I'm, if I'm sure that I want to do that. If you click yes, you can see that now we've got 13 periods in the year, and the last period is April. What I can do is do that again, and add another period, and then my last period will be May. So I've gone all the way through from April 07 to May 2008. What we can also do is, as long as the period is a future period that's open, we can remove periods as well. So if I right click and click delete period I can take them back off again and I can take that one back off again in the same way and if I wanted to I could take March off and make it only make this year only have 11 periods. So I'm, I actually want 12 periods for this year for the purpose of this training course so I'm just going to add that period back on and I'm going to leave it as I found it originally. I'm not going to save any changes in there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go and create an account code. So if we're going to new account code, I know we did a similar thing in the last module for the banking. So go through to next, and it's just going to be a user-defined account again, and it's going to be a simple structure again. And my account code this time is going to be 4003. It's going to be sales type D. going to be a revenues group, it's going to be sales and then we're going to put it into sales UK. Okay and now I'm going to go next and it just shows me the account codes that that are going to be created, obviously there's only one there and then finish and I should have created my new account code. The next thing we're going to do is go and have a look at the financial layouts because we've created two new account codes one for the banking in the last module and that new one I've just created there neither of them are going to be showing in my financial layouts so if I go down into financial layouts and have a look at the profit and loss what I will see is that if I've got a check here up in the top right hand corner for check duplicates or items that are not reported so if I click the check duplicates button, there's no duplicates in there, and if I go to accounts not reported, it now shows my 4003 code in there has not been reported. So it's telling me basically I need to add it into my layout. Now I can't amend the default layout. If I try to amend this, it will tell me that I can't amend. There's no way I can insert another code in there, and I can't change what's in there. So what I have to do, and it, it'll actually come up and tell me sorry but you can't change that okay so what I actually have to do is copy this layout to another layout so what I'm now going to do is copy my profit and loss one and I'm going to call it something different I'm going to call it um, dangerous profit and loss and then in the center here is a copy button. So if I click the copy button, it says you must save it, that's fine. And then it asks me where I want to copy it from because there's only one profit and loss layout already set up, there's only one that I can select from. So I must copy from the default. So I'm now in my dangerous PL layout. So once again I could run the check just to confirm that that is definitely missing the 4003. What I'm going to do is in the Sales UK group here, I need to add my 4003 nominal in. So, double click it there to add it in. So that's now added it into that group. And if I then click save, and then go and run my check again, what it should show me is that everything has now been accounted for. 
I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the balance sheet. So if I go into balance, the default balance sheet to start with, what I should find is that my bank nominal there is showing as not being reported. So obviously I can't amend my default balance sheet, so I must go up and make a new one. So this time I'm going to copy my balance sheet. Call it dangerous balance sheet. And again I'm going to copy from the original balance sheet so all the codes are already in there. If I want to I could leave it as a blank balance sheet and build my balance sheet from scratch. But obviously that's going to be a little bit more time consuming because you've got to put all these things in. So now what I'm going to do is add my new bank nominal in. So if I go down to cash at bank and expand that section I should now be able to select from my I think it was 1208 nominal. And obviously search for it in here as well if I need to. So that's been added in there now. So if I now go and check duplicates, everything's been accounted for. Next thing I'm going to do is create a new account type, which is in account subgroups. So if I double click account subgroups to open the window. Okay, and what we're going to do is create uh, a new type called sales example, which is in the account subgroup of sales. So this is my subgroup here. So if I highlight sales and then go into detail, that shows me the account types that I've got under that subgroup, and I can add another one in here. So I'm just going to create one called sales example. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is go and create a bud budget split table. So down here on the menu, if I double click on budget split and then go into the new option, I can then give it a, a description, etc. We're going to call this one seasonal example. Okay, and I could define which which financial year I want my budget split to be for. Well, I'm going to leave it as this year, and then I click the generate button to generate the financial year basically with the budgets. Now, to start with, it splits them as evenly as it can across the years. What we're going to do is enter 20% for month one, 10% for month two. And then five for the rest of the year until the last year, last period, which is going to be 25. And when we've put all them in, it must come to 100% down the bottom. So all the figures that we put in there must always equal 100 to be able to save it. Okay, so we'll save and close on that. The next thing we're going to do is create some account segments. Now, account segments are used when we can create a segmented account structure within Enterprise. Although we can create a segmented account structure, at the moment we haven't actually got the proper reporting tools to be able to get the data out of the segments. And also we can't put, put a segment onto a customer, another segment onto, an, uh, onto a stock item, for instance, so that it will automatically post into them segments. So although we've got the option there to create the segments, at the moment, the actual use of the segments in, in a way of, of regarding reporting on them and getting the figures into them is somewhat limited, but we, we are aiming to get something in a future version of Enterprise where we'll be able to, to group by various segments to get figures and things like that in the chart of accounts. So if I go through and create the segments, now we've already got country, location and department in there, which is created when we already set up the company. If we needed to, we could delete these and we can obviously add new ones in from here. That's been done for us. So what we're now going to do is create some, some details for each segment. So if I go next and then in here, we're on the country tab. So we're going to add some countries in there, which is UK, United Kingdom, US, United States, PHP, which is Philippines. and FR which is France. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is define some locations. So we've got MAN for Manchester. LON for London. LA for Los Angeles. NY for New York. Oops. PAR for Paris. And MC for McCarthy City. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do is create some departments in there. Now we're going to have ADM for admin, SAL for sales, PRO for production, and SUP for support. On the next screen, we then set combinations up for them. So in France, because we're on the country tab, in France, what we're going to have, well, we would have Paris in France, in Philippines, we're going to have McCarthy, um, in the UK, we're going to have Manchester and London, and in the US, we're going to have Los Angeles and New York. And then locations, so for segment code LA, what we're going to have, we're going to have sales and production, we'll have admin and support in London, we'll have all four in Manchester, and we'll have sales and support in McCarthy, admin production and support in New York, and we'll have all four again in Paris, for instance. Okay, so when I go next, we then finish the wizard. What we'll, what we'll then do is we'll go and create some nominal codes for that now using that template. So if I go into new nominal code, a new account code, and click next, okay this time we're going to use the chart of accounts template to create our segmented accounts, just means we won't have to key all the accounts in, make it a lot quicker to generate this just to show you. And this time we're going to go for a segmented account structure. And actually, I'm going to just apply this to revenue and expense only, because that will mean we're not getting thousands of accounts created. And then basically, it takes us through that wizard that we've just been through. So what, what segments are you going to use? What are the segment details? These are the ones I've just keyed in. And what the what the different segments you want? So these are the ones I just selected in the previous wizard. So if I click Next, you'll notice that the Next button is now showing us Depressed. I'm not going to click that again or it will go through and actually create them. So at this point it's showing me now these are all the ones that it will create if I want it to. Now I can untick some of these if I want to on the left hand side so I can just select the ones I want. Um, but if I was to click next at this point it would actually go and put all them accounts into my chart of accounts and it's going to make our nominal very very large so I'm going to actually cancel the wizard at this point. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go and create a, uh, an opening balance journal. Now an opening balance journal is just a normal journal but we're going to date it at the end of December. So if we go into the new journal option Okay, set my date back to be December the 31st, like so. Now, reference one is going to be um, opening trial balance. Okay, and we're just going to key some of the nominals in. So we've got 0020 is going to be a 5000 debit. Next line 0040, I'm just going to keep these in, it's quicker, is 2000. 0041, it's going to be a 1000 on the, on the credit. Two one oh nine. It's going to be four thousand on the credit. 
one one or three. Be a five thousand debit and nine 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 nine, which is our opening balance control. It's going to be seven thousand. Okay, so hopefully by the time I've done that, the journal balances. You see at the bottom of the screen that it does. Okay, so I'm going to save this journal. Okay, and that concludes the uh, the setup for the accounting. So the next video is going to go through the system manager setup.